Welcome to the CIA case files. In this episode, does this document prove the CIA actively covers up archaeological finds, influencing archaeologists to write misleading and untruthful accounts of our history? Are the conspiracy theorists right when it comes to Egyptology? Are the likes of Mark Lerner and Zawi Awas just stooges for a historical cover-up? What is it that the powers that be don't want us to know? Join me as I delve into the CIA case files. In 1950, a group of archaeologists led by Louis Dupree excavated a cave in Afghanistan called Shamshir Gar. According to Dupree's paper, published by the American Museum of Natural History, he set out to find evidence of ancient history of the region, but was disappointed to only find evidence of occupation going back a mere 2,000 years. His discoveries included mummified bodies, hearths, potteries, Celts, rock art, all dating to the past 2,000 years. But was all this a lie? The document, written in 1952, is a list of images from Dupree's excavation of Shamshir Gar. On the face of it, it is pretty mundane. Detailing his journey from Spray, Gibraltar, onto Lebanon, Egypt, and finally Afghanistan, and the excavation of Sam Shamshir Gar. But when we look closer at the document, things start to become very suspicious. First, with the redacted titles. Odd as nothing else in the document is redacted. So what was it that the CIA were interested in? Could it be the journey to Afghanistan? Could it be the landscape of Afghanistan? Or could it be the archaeological site of Shamshir Gar? The journey itself throws up some surprises, starting in Baalbek, Lebanon. Baalbek is a megalithic site occupied by cultures right through history, including the Romans and the Greeks. But it is particularly famous for the largest megalithic block known to man. But what you don't find in any museum or in any history books is a spinning mechanism at Baalbek. What could this spinning mechanism be? Is it proof the powers that be are actively hiding elements of our history for their own gains? Evidence of high technology? We don't have the picture so it's hard to say, but the next image is less ambiguous. The Sphinx on the Giza Plateau, believed to have been built by the Pharaoh Cafe, has left people in awe for a millennia. Said to be carved out of the bedrock, it was a statue honouring the rising sun. According to modern archaeologists like Mark Lerner and Zahi Awas, there is nothing under the Sphinx. A claim that has been hotly disputed by so-called conspiracy theorists and alternative researchers and denied vigorously by the mainstream government-controlled archaeologists. So how is it possible that in 1952 somebody took a picture of the temple under the Sphinx. Is this just a poor description of a photo? Does he mean the temple under the Sphinx and the pyramids above the Sphinx? The Sphinx temple does lie in front of the Sphinx and it is possible you could describe it as being under the Sphinx. However, this claim can be dismissed when we see the next entry on the list. Ruins near Sphinx because the only ruins near to the Sphinx are the ruins of the Sphinx Temple. So is there actually a photograph in existence for the hotly denied temple under the Sphinx? And does that photograph lie in the CIA archives? But what about Shamshir Gar itself? According to Dupree in his findings, Shamshir Gar, historical cave site, he states he was disappointed not to find any anything before 2,000 years ago. This was backed up by the geologist in the excavation team, John Ziegler, who states that the cave 
has had only a short history of occupancy. The cavern formed inside the mountain probably in the Miocene, but was opened approximately 2,000 years ago. The Miocene was 5 to 20 million years ago. So why then did the Afghan National Museum have on display artifacts from Shamshir Gar dating back 5,000 years? Then there's the engravings of mammals and the tridents in the fifth chamber covered in calcite. Calcite is made up of microscopic marine animals, more precisely their shells, which tells us the cave was underwater for a long period of time. We can see evidence of water shaping in the landscape around Shamshir Gar. These features are often seen on beaches, but here we see them on a much larger scale. Even Ziegler points out the influence of water on shaping the cave, but Dupree himself states the cave is essentially now a dry cave. So how did the carvings and cave paintings get covered in calcite? Why does the document state that they were covered in calcite, but after the CIA meeting, Dupree states they were covered in cave dust? Then there is the painting of a red trident. Other red tridents have been found in other cave sites around the world and they all date to between 15 and 50,000 years old. So why is this trident only dated to no more than 2,000 years? Is this just a mistake from an experienced team of archaeologists or a cover-up by the CIA? Then we have the metal analysis from artefacts of the excavation. Although the team make assumptions based on the information Dupree gave them, their conclusion was, from the standpoint of quality, the iron in the specimen is superior to modern white cast iron. A surprising variety of alloys and metallurgical techniques are presented by these few specimens. Such a variety of alloys and skills indicate an advanced stage in the art of metal metallurgy that could have been reached only on the basis of a long background of experience and practice. Can all these discrepancies be accounted for? Bad archaeology perhaps? Misinterpretation maybe? But what if it wasn't the excavation the CIA were interested in? What if it was Annie Dupree, Louis Dupree's wife? She is by far the person who is named and photographed the most, and her story is suspicious to say the least. In the early 60s, a couple of years after Dupree publishes his findings, a CIA operative named Alan Wolf and his wife Nancy are sent to Afghanistan. During their stay, they meet the Duprees. Then, a love quadrangle apparently ensues, and Nancy, Alan Wolfe's wife, ends up marrying Lou, Louis Dupree and becomes Nancy Hatch Dupree. And Alan apparently marries Annie. Together, Louis and Nancy become significant figures in Afghanistan and the Afga Afghanistan politics until they are forced to leave in the 1970s after Louis Dupree is accused of working for the CIA. Louis Dupree died in 1989, exiled from Afghanistan. Nancy Dupree returned to Afghanistan in 2013 and died in 2017. Alan Wolfe became a decorated CIA agent even getting a mention on Wikipedia before dying in 2004, but with no mention of his new wife, Annie, to be found. In the book, Love and Ruin, Tales of Obsession, Danger and Heartbreak, this love quadrangle is mentioned, but when pushed, Louis Dupree only ever states that he divorced Annie and married Nancy and Nancy refuses to talk about it. The book goes on to state that Alan and Annie left Kabul in 1963, and that is when Annie Dupree Wolf 
an artist and an academic author completely disappears from the Google universe. So what really happened to Annie Dupree? Can all these things be explained away? What was the spinning mechanism at Baalbek? Is there a temple under the Sphinx? Does Shamshirgar provide evidence of a global catastrophe? Why all the discrepancies in Louis Dupree's findings? Why were the CIA so involved in Afghanistan 30 years before the Russian invasion and the rise of the Taliban? And what really happened to Annie Dupree? Until next time, take care of yourself. <laughs>